the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. They got Dak Prescott coming back. That's a good thing. The offense last season, even with Andy Dalton, was not the issue. The offense was able to put up points. The issue was defense. And obviously, they did not pick up the fifth-year option on, uh, 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 my God, I went blank. What's the guy's name? Van Der Esch, uh, right? uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, yeah. yeah. So, didn't pick up the, uh, the option on him. And Sean Lee decided he's going to retire, but he was never available anyway. So, you know, you had holes that you needed to to fill up. Uh, in free agency, they went out and they got Carlos Watkins, defensive tackle out of Houston. Uh, I think that was okay, but they had a bunch of holes on defense that they needed to fill. Their first six picks all went defense. Uh, their needs were cornerback, safety, defensive tackle, linebacker, and they needed an offensive tackle. Okay, you know, tackle uh, for offense, I, I think that they've got it short up. But either way, they uh, they drafted in the first round Micah Parsons out of Penn State, who, I, honestly, last year I would have thought he would have been a top five guy. He is a monster. And I, getting him at 12 is an insane value pick. You You were able to move backwards and still pick this guy up. I think it's a great pick. They got Kelvin Joseph, cornerback out of Kentucky in the second round, and he's a stud. Uh, you got defensive interior lineman Osa Odigizua out of UCLA wow. in the third round. You got Chauncey Golston, edge rusher out of Iowa in the third round. Late third round, you got Nashawn Wright, cornerback out of Oregon State. And then in the fourth round, you got linebacker Jabril Cox out of LSU, who actually transferred to LSU last year from North Dakota State, where he was a stud there as well. Uh, played well for LSU last year. That scheme was awful for uh, yep. for Chris's Tigers last year, but... Fourth round, you got offensive tackle Josh Ball out of Marshall. Uh, Marshall was able to run the ball down people's throats last year. So, he is a stud. Uh, Simi Fioko out of Stanford, wide receiver in the fifth round. And then you start taking your flyers, right? Defensive lineman Quinton Bohanna out of Kentucky. Israel Muk- uh, Mukuamu out of South Carolina. Uh, played well with South Carolina. I've watched him multiple times. Could not begin to pronounce his name, but, you know, could be a stud, well. maybe Mutuamu. not. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Matt Farniak out of Nebraska, offensive guard in the seventh round. Another guy to take a flyer on. He's a big hog molly. You know how that goes. I I think the Cowboys did well. I love teams that, one, I can see the strategy, right? They they needed to shore up mm-hmm. defense. Hey, your first six picks are all defense, and they're all in the first three rounds, first, you know, early fourth round. Um, I'm a fan of that. And on top of that, you know, I think they got some dudes. So I I, yep. I like what the Cowboys did. I think it was okay. Yeah, I thought Cowboy. This is probably Jerry Jones' best draft since they got Dak in the fourth round. This is an absolutely fantastic, and it's surprising almost because we know how Jerry Jones is, and he always wants to take the flashy guy and wants to take this guy his team doesn't need, and that is not what they did. That defense was the second worst run defense in the league last year. They couldn't stop anyone in the passing game either. And they just come out, and you nailed it right on the head. Their first six picks on defense, they only took two players on the offensive side, or three players, excuse me, on the offensive side of the ball. Two of those were linemen and then a late flyer on a wide receiver they don't need. Good job by the Cowboys. This is absolutely what they needed to do. They focused on the right side of the ball, did it hard. Six players, (laughs) title of your sex tape, did it hard through the first four rounds. Uh, Love what the Cowboys did here. One of the better drafts in this division. Um, I, if not the best draft in the division, just based on getting needs and not doing the dumb thing that the Cowboys usually did. So as much as I hate to say it, and as much as I can't stand the Cowboys or Cowboys fans, I do like what the Cowboys did here. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. I think they did have the best draft in this division. Um, th- this is the first time that it looks like Jerry got absolutely out of the way and uh, people around the organization began to make picks. Um, they went after their needs. I think they filled their needs well. I like Mar- Micah Parsons a lot. I think he's going to be fine. Um, like I said, Gary said this earlier, if he came out last year, he's a top five pick. So right. it, the fact that, that he came out this year, he sat out, whatever, it was weird. It, it, Wasn't there some, like, fight or something he incited yeah, he, or something he got, he got, and people he freaked out? A little bit. He, it was not just fight. There was uh, some hazing, hazing. That, went, yeah. that went on in the gotcha. locker room that, that had some sexual allegations to it. Um, but anyway, the, the cornerback from Kentucky, Joseph's going to be really good. Uh, Mark Stoops has put defensive players in the NFL, and every one of them have been absolute pros. Uh, they might not be pro bowl guys, but they're all making rosters. They're all starting or getting lots of snaps uh, on the teams for the last two or three years. And and I think he's just going to keep doing that. He's he's turning things around in Kentucky. Love what he's doing there. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like what the Cowboys are doing. I don't, 
I don't know how much it affects wins and, and losses this year because sure. these are all rookies. Some right. of them are going to come in, play well immediately, and some of them are going to take a year or two to actually have an effect on the outcome of games for this yeah. team, which means – do I think they can still score 45 a game? Probably. Do I still think they're going to get beat 48 to 45 a lot? Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. I tend to agree. You'll be an over monster. You'll just be hitting overs with this Cowboys team next year. Oh, just hitting oh, the overs. That right. it, it, yep. Do you think the books are ever going to get the balls to actually just start jacking these numbers up? Because they <laughs> well, never really make them that big. It, start, it starts getting there. Like, let's just say eight years ago, you didn't, when you saw a total of 45, 44 and a half, you're like, yeah. ooh. That's really iffy. Now you see that, like, okay, I've got to figure out a way to talk myself into this because now it's 54 and a half, 56 and a half. Yeah. Shit, you never thought you would see 10 never years ago. Thought. You're seeing it consistently across the board this year, sure. and you're going to see a lot of that with this Cowboys team, especially with that. Oh, that. no, if it's in the 50s, it's over because they're scoring yeah. 25, and they're losing by at least a touchdown in that game. Right. I agree. Exactly. I agree. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.